All right, so today we're in section 7.3, linear functions. Uh, the good news about today's lesson is actually a lot of it's going to be familiar to you because we learned to write linear equations pretty much the exact same way as linear functions. So even on the first slide, like a lot of this should be familiar to you, that you can write a linear function using the form y equals mx plus b. Okay, y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept form, but it's also called function form, where m equals slope, all right, same thing, and b equals y-intercept, same thing as linear equations. Um, so you're going to see a lot of that kind of pop up in the examples that we're learning today. Okay, so example one, I'm going to write the linear function using a graph, all right? You don't necessarily have to copy down the graph, all right? Uh, that would take a lot of time. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to read the graph. So if you look at the example in your book, they tell you to use ordered pairs. Now, technically, could you say what ordered pair stands for the first point? Could you say the ordered pair? Uh, it would be negative 2, negative 6. You could pull it out, and then you could find your slope that way. But what I think we could do is we could just count our rise over run, right? I mean, we have the graph right there. There's no work involved, and we can count the rise over the run to determine our slope. Again, with the end goal, I need to write the linear function, okay? But in order to do that, I need to know the slope. So my rule says I can choose any two points. I can choose the first two points. I can choose the next two points. I can choose the last two points. But it has to be consecutive. I can't skip them. I can't just choose the first one and the last one. All right, you guys remember that? Is that kind of coming back to you? All right, so the rise over the run. I'm just going to pick the first two points from left to right. So starting down here at the first point, what is my rise to get it to the second point? How many did I rise by? I, I rise by three, okay? So three is my rise. And what is my run to get to the second point? Two. So two is my run, all right? Now I'm ready to write my function. Y equals MX plus B is my baseline. The Y equals part is standard. But now I just did the work for rise over run to plug that in for M. So it's three over two x and now the only other part is to find my b but remember b stands for what you just wrote it down y -intercept. y intercept so that means where the line crosses the y axis remember it's not the x axis it's the y axis so at what value does my line cross the y axis Three. Negative 3. So just remember when I'm going down, that's going to be negative. I know it's kind of deceiving or hard to read on my graph, but it is negative 3, so it's minus 3, and I'm done. Okay, y equals 3 over 2x minus 3. So I just wrote the linear function using a graph. Okay, so now I want you to try one. Uh, when you have the linear function written, I want to see it, so just raise your hand, and I will come check. Okay, so again, between any two points is fine. Uh, I'm just going to pick the first two. From the first point to the second point, how many do I go down? One. One. How many do I go over? Two. two. Okay, so because I went down one, y equals negative one over two x. Now, I did see a few people writing the negative here. Is that correct? My run is never negative. I'm always moving forward, left to right. My rise is really what's negative, or you could just put it right in front of the fraction as well. But we know that the, one stand, the negative stands for the rise. Okay, and where does the line cross the y-axis? Negative, negative one. And that's it. Okay, so once you get really good at these, actually you'll do them pretty quickly. Okay, there's not a whole lot of work to show when we're reading a graph to write the linear function. In example two, we have a little bit more work um, because all we have is a table, which technically sets up ordered pairs, um, but it's not as easy to determine the slope. I have to actually use my slope formula 
to determine my slope, and then I'm ready to write the function. All right, so go ahead, um, and we're going to start off by copying down these first two tables. Uh, do them side by side like I did with room below uh, to work them out. Okay, um, so let's look at the first XY table. Um, and just as a reminder, you can choose any two ordered pairs as long as they're back to back. So you could choose the first two, uh, you could choose uh, the second and the third, or the third and the fourth. Um, it does not matter. Now, there would be a slight advantage to choosing the third and the fourth. Why? Um, yeah, because of that zero for the x value, I know that's going to be significant um, in writing my function. Um, I think I'm just kind of like a person of habit, so I like just picking the first two. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. But again, you could choose any of the other ones. Um, as long as they're back to back, you're going to get the same slope as I do. All right. Um, so we have our equation. Can y'all say it with me? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. All right, so let's write out our ordered pairs just to kind of give us that visual on it so we can figure out which one stands for which uh, variable. Negative 3, 9 and negative 2, 7. Okay, those are our two ordered pairs that we're pulling from the table. And again, why am I doing this? because I need to know what the slope is so I can write my function. All right, which one of these numbers is my y2 value? Y'all can just tell me, which one is y2? It's seven, okay, which one is y1? Nine, so seven minus nine. I just plug them in. All right, uh, Caitlin, which one is my x2 value? Negative two. And Lily, which one's x1? Negative three, okay? Now, my formula says I subtract them. So what happens when I subtract a negative three? Yeah, it becomes a positive. Guys, that is so important. If you don't catch the double negative, it's wrong, okay? So catch the double negative and immediately change it to a positive. That changes what your answer is going to be. Seven minus nine is? Negative 2 and negative 2 plus 3, okay, yes, is going to be 1. Um, or I could just say 2, all right, or I'm sorry, negative 2, either 1. Uh, now, why would, I, why would I want to leave it over 1, or why might that even be a good idea to leave it over 1 in my equation? Logan? Yeah, yeah, so when I put it on the graph, it reminds me to rise over run, to run one, okay? So for me, again, I like having that visual, so I might leave it over one. All right, so I'm ready to write my equation or my function now. Y equals, found my slope, negative two, you could say negative two over one, X, and now I need to know the Y intercept. So I can go back to my table, it makes it real easy if my table has an X value of what? An x value of 0, my y-intercept is going to be 3, okay? Because, visualize it, guys, on the graph, I'm not going either way on x. I'm going directly up to a 3, so that's where the line crosses, okay? So, it's plus 3, and I'm done. All right, go ahead and do the second one. When you have uh, your function written, I want you to raise your hand so I can come look at it. Use two ordered pairs to find your slope. I just chose the first two, negative two, negative two, and zero, negative one, okay? And when I did negative one minus negative two, okay, over zero minus negative two, I've got a lot of double negatives there, don't I? All right, so if you don't catch those, that's going to mess you up. You get positive one half, okay? That's my slope is positive one half. So how would I plug that in now to my function? Y, say it with me, Y equals one half X, all right, time out. How do I know what my Y intercept is gonna be? Now, here's what I've seen. I've seen a lot of people saying it's two because they immediately see this zero here, but two, is the x-intercept when y is 0. 
you need the y-intercept in there, so that's why it's the first one. When x is 0, the y-value is my y-intercept. Most of you have got that. Okay, but I've just had a lot of people getting confused on that today, so I just want to make sure I pointed it out. All right, who got that right? A lot of you guys got that right. Awesome. Okay, so example three kind of pulls everything together. All right, uh, there's a lot going on here. We're just going to kind of break it down piece by piece. What I want you to start with is I want you to copy down this table up here at the top of the slide uh, where you have advertising values and you have revenue values. And remember, these values are actually in the million, so it's not saying $2. That's actually, that 2 stands for 2 million. 6 million, 4 million, 10 million, okay, these are in the millions. Um, and we're going to look and see what kind of pattern we see here between how much money a company spends on advertising and what their revenue um, is uh, based on how much they're spending in advertising. All right, so that's kind of uh, where we're going here. Okay. So um, let me ask you this. Do I need negative numbers on my graph? No. No, because the table dictates what numbers need to be on my graph. Now... Do you see um, an X and a Y technically in the table? No, okay, so I just wanna point out that um, you know, in the table your first value is gonna be X and the second value is gonna be Y because you are still matching them up as an ordered pair. The first one is X and the second one's Y. So don't worry if you, if you say, oh, I don't see which one's X and which one's Y. The first one is X, the second one is Y, okay? So based on that, I know that this top row of values need to go on the x-axis, okay? So if I have 0 through 8, I could go by what? Would I go by 5s? I go by 1s or 2s. Okay, so I went by 2s. All right, it didn't even quite cover my entire graph. All right, and that's okay. All right, now you can sketch this on your notes. That's fine, but you need to use a straight edge. So... I've seen some that look really good, all right? And you want to you wanna spread them out, too. I've seen some teeny tiny graphs. Well, that makes it really hard for you to plot the values, okay? So spread it out a little bit, all right? Um, it doesn't have to be, like, squished together. Um, we're going to go by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. And notice there's space, and there's an even amount of space between um, each interval, all right? So we're setting up our x-axis based on our x values, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 10. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing with y. Here's our y values, okay? So if my y values stop at 10, is that going to let me plot all these values? If I stop at 10? No. No, what do I need to go up to? 18. At least 18, maybe a little bit above, okay? So how am I going to get from a 2 to eight, two and 18? Do I want to go by 1s? Uh, twos or threes or even fours, okay? So um, I would say to go by anything more than five would be a little bit of a stretch. Um, I chose fours, and then basically the space in between could be twos, okay? And notice I didn't even use the entire, like, template of a graph. That's okay, all right? So your intervals might look different than mine, okay? That doesn't mean that you're wrong, it's just, if we go too big, um, it's really difficult to be accurate on the points that we're plotting. All right? So, and if we go too small, then our graph just ends up being massive and takes us longer. All right? That's really the only downside to going too small. All right, so go ahead and finish setting up your graph, and then we're going to plot the values. Now we're just going to match them up, uh, match up our ordered pairs, and we're going to start graphing these. All right, so I'm trying to kind of start over on this. All right, so our first order pair is 0, 2. So let's find the 0 for the x and the 2 for the y and plot our point. And it would go right here, over 0, up 2. It goes right down there in the bottom, that point down there. All right, where would our next point go according to our table? 2, 6. Okay, so 2 for x and up 6 for y. Over 2, up 6. Where does our next point go, everyone? Where does it go? 
over 4 up 10. All right, go ahead and finish the last two points. Right, so now we go over 6 up 14 and over 8 up 18. And we can draw our arrow through, and now we have graphed a linear function. All right, but we have this other keyword here at the beginning of that statement, right. So I actually need to write the function that is represented here. So now we need to figure out what is the slope and what is the y-intercept so I can write the function, okay? Now, here's, here's what I have here options-wise. I have a table and I have a graph. So because I have both, you can choose your preference. Do you prefer to write the function from a graph or from a table? What's your preference? Everybody keeps saying table, which, I mean, for me, I just graph. I can look at the graph and figure out my slope. But everyone keeps saying table. That's fine. Let's do, let's do the table. All right. Um, now, remember our rule. For the table, it just has to be consecutive ordered pairs. Okay, so let's just pick the first two. Again, I'm kind of like in that habit. I like just picking the first two ordered pairs in the table. Zero, two, and two, six. And here's what I'm doing. I'm writing the function so I can make an interpretation of what's going on here between my data values, between the revenue and the advertising cost. All right, so go ahead and find your slope and write the function um, for this uh, data. Okay, let's write the function. Okay, so we subtract and we get 2. So y equals 2x plus 2. Y equals 2x plus 2. So what does that mean? I need to look at as my x values are changing and from one ordered pair to the next, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, what do you notice about each interval? It's increasing by how much? 2. two okay. So I'm looking at, okay, for every $2 million that I'm spending on advertising, say I'm running this company. For every $2 million that my company spends on advertising, what is happening to the company's revenue? It's increasing by $4 million, okay? So I'm going to write that in words, all right? That is my rate of change, okay? So for every $2 million spent in advertising, Revenue increases by $4 million. All right, I'm finding that pattern. It all goes back to finding the pattern as X is increasing or decreasing. Um, what is happening to my Y values? And now I'm just kind of naming those categories. All right, now let me ask you this. Could I cut each of those in half? Basically what I'm saying is, what if I spent only $1 million in advertising? How much would my revenue increase by? Two million, okay? So I could also make that interpretation and, and half it even more. Um, and that would align more closely with what my slope value was, okay? So we could say that also. But really, guys, here's the most important part. I can make a connection to the topic that I'm looking at, all right? And we're gonna talk in a minute about how that can be beneficial. All right, so what about the y-intercept? Which one of the ordered pairs showed me what the y-intercept was? Which ordered pair from the table? Zero, zero, two. zero, two. So what am I saying here? What am I saying here? So I'm looking specifically at the ordered pair that showed me the y-intercept. How much money did I spend in advertising? Nothing. I spent nothing in advertising, and what can I expect my revenue to be? $2 million. So I just, I say that. When $0 is spent on advertising, I can expect $2 million in revenue. So what happens if I actually need more revenue than that to keep the company afloat? Can I make cuts in advertising? Can I say, oh, we don't need to advertise? No, not in this scenario, okay? Um, we can't do that. So what do you think would have happened actually if, as, um, if, if it w was uh, basically the opposite? The more money I spent on advertising, uh, my revenue went down. What do you think that would tell me as, as the operator of this company? And it's ineffective, 
right? Oh, I'm spending more and more money on advertising, but I'm not seeing my revenues increase at all. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk commercials for a minute. What kind of commercials are you guys seeing like over and over and over again right now? Oh, okay, Peloton. Peloton. <laughs> actually, yeah, Peloton commercials are off the chain right now, yes. Uh, what else? Geico. Okay, so this is a third class to say Geico. What else? Sprint. Um, Sprint. Has anybody seen those AT&T commercials? Man, they're really funny. They're really funny. Like, you don't know what you're... All progressive. Progressive. So a lot of insurance, and then you see a lot of, like, medication commercials. Okay, so so here's here's what you can kind of guess. Like, there's a reason why. The companies don't get together and they say, hmm, how can we waste the most amount, uh, uh, the most you know, money without getting any types of results. Obviously, there's some proof or some evidence that the more they advertise on TV, the more their revenue is going to increase. So that's where information like this can actually be really helpful. All right. And also to predict, well, if the trend is increasing in the more money we spend on advertising, the higher our revenue goes, then, you know, it, it tells us we can keep investing. All right. Okay, so if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for section 7.3.